Hello, welcome to another video. I've got geometric series today and I want to show you uh, something you have to look for before you can even think of using geometric series as your means of checking if a series converges or diverges and even evaluating. There's only one thing to look for. Do not waste your time looking for anything else or there are things that when you see you have to take your mind off of geometric series. It cannot be the test for it. And what is it? It is where n is located in a sub n. So in the expression here, you want to look at, is there any n in this expression? There is none. It's only sitting in the exponent. If n is only in the exponent, use geometric series test. Okay, that's all you need to do. The same thing for this one. The reason I know we're going to use geometric series test for this is because the exponent n is only on top. If there's an n in the base, there's an n in the base here, forget about geometric series, it won't work. So now that we know these two will require us using this test, let's see if either of these converges and what it converges to, or what they converge to, or, or if they both diverge. Let's get into the video. Let us write first what the general appearance of a geometric series um, is. And you would note, I'm just going to put it here because I want to use that side for computation. Here, a geometric series generally looks like this. It is the sum from n equals, it could be 0 or 1 or whatever, depending on what the expression is, as long as the, whatever this starts from does not create a problem initially. So let's say it goes from 1 to infinity. You're going to have two terms. You're going to have the first term, which we write as a sub 1, which is the first term, because it starts from 1. If it starts from 0, we might, that's why we don't want to start from 0, okay? Just to avoid the confusion. But this is the first term multiplied by the common ratio, and the common ratio is that term that is raised to n. So if you can write any both of these expressions to look like this, it is a geometric series. And we say that this is our common ratio, R is common ratio, common ratio. And all you're looking for to make a decision is this guy, not this guy. We don't care about what this guy is, as long as this guy is not zero. But we want to know what R is. What is the absolute value of R? Is R less than one? If R is less than 1, then we have a convergent series. It is convergent. But if R is greater than 1, then it diverges. So this is your focus. As long as your R is less than 1, it converges, and then you can go ahead and do your calculation. But if R is not less than 1, if it is equal to 1, or it is greater than 1, your job is done. You just write diverges, and you're done. So let's answer this and answer this. So clearly you can see that this is already written in this form. Because I have something raised to power n, although I don't have something multiplying it, which means there's one sitting here. So you can look at this and say this is the same thing as the sum to infinity from n equals one, so sum to infinity from n equals one of one times, this is now my common ratio, it is sine 400 raised to power n. This is a geometric series, and clearly my first term, a sub 1, is equal to 1. And my common ratio is equal to sine 400. That's it. So my, the question is, is the common ratio less than 1? Let's go back here. Is the sine of 400 degrees less than 1? Remember, whatever you do, the absolute value of anything you do with sine is always less than or equal to 1. So we want to see if the absolute value of this is less than 1. What option do we have? What's going to happen if the sine of an angle is equal to 1, or the absolute value of this is equal to 1. Only two conditions. One, if it is pi over 2, which is 90 degrees, and this is not 90 degrees. 
Okay, this is actually 40 degrees. If you go through one cycle and you subtract 360 from it, this is 40 degrees. So clearly, it does not fall in the category of being equal to one and it can never be greater than one. So the only option sine 400 has, has is to be less than one. So we can say that sine 400 implies, okay, R, which is equal to, okay, absolute value of R, which is equal to absolute value of sine 400, which is equal to the absolute value of sine 40 is less than one, okay? At least this helps you make your final decision that this is less than one. So because this is less than one, we can say, therefore, this converges, okay? Therefore, Therefore, the sum to infinity from 1 of sine 400 degrees to the n converges. You have made the first decision, this is convergent. What does it converge to? Well, we have to find the formula. Remember the formula for the sum of a geometric series to infinity, okay? We're going to say the sum to infinity of a geometric series is equal to the first term divided by one minus the common ratio. This you have to have memorized. And we already established that the first term in this case is one and the common ratio is sine 400. So this means that our sum to infinity for this problem is first term one. Is our first term one? Yep. Oh, but we're starting from n equals 1. Maybe I should have changed that to n equals 0 because that's what will justify this. So when n equals 1, actually this is not correct. I have to adjust this because if this is the first term, um, when n equals 1, it's going to be 400 because this is going to be 1 times sine 400 raised to power 1, which is sine 400. So I have to adjust this. This is not correct. Let's write it here. A sub 1 equals sine 400 raised to the power 1, which is just sine 400. Okay, I'm going to change this. You see, make sure you correct that kind of mistake. It depends on where your n starts from. Um, so we we'll just know that this is A. We put A here. Where is my formula? Here, this is generally, if this starts from 1, um, zero actually this will start from zero or one depending just find your a okay let me not put this here let me just leave it this way okay better so whatever a that is depends on where you start from a naught or a zero or a one so here what we have is a one which is sine 400 sine 400 divided by one minus sine 400 okay now if you don't have a calculator and you're not allowed to approximate because this one is going to be sine 40 and I'm sure you sine 40 is between sine 30 degrees and sine 45 degrees so it's between 0 0.5 and 0 0.7 okay let's go do this one so remember the key that you just look for n n has to be only in the exponents not in the base okay it cannot be anywhere else apart from in the exponent otherwise it is not a geometric series. Okay, for this one, you want to look at this. You have to rewrite it in the form a times r raised to power n. There's going to be one number multiplying something raised to power n. It has to look like this, otherwise you cannot make any decision. So let's do some algebraic manipulation. And this is going to be equal to the sum to infinity from n equals zero to infinity um, what do we have? Remember, we're starting now in this case from n equals zero. So when we determine what's standing alone, we should be able to find that. Again, let's see. Well, we're going to rewrite this as 3 to the 2n times 3. This is from algebra 1, laws of exponents. Oh, this is raised to the power negative n. Okay. And this is going to be um, times... 1 over 4 raised to power n. This is another law of exponents that you need to adopt. So that's what we have. And this is going to keep the trend. So we have the sum to infinity n equals 0. If we simplify this, we can put this that has n on top of this. That's what you have to look for. 
combine the, everything that has ends, no matter what they look like. Put them together and see if you can have just the n outside. So we're gonna have, now three to the two n is the same thing as three squared raised to power n, which is nine raised to power n. So I can write this as nine raised to power n over four raised to power n. Okay, so I've combined this and this, and this is left on the outside. Okay, this looks the same as, this is n goes to zero to infinity of, now I can combine this and this, that's another law of exponent, which is gonna be nine over four raised to power n times three. Okay, I can bring that three in here, and this is equal to the sum to infinity as n. I know I don't need more space because clearly this diverges. Okay, so this is gonna be three times nine over four raised to power n. So clearly here, since when n equals zero, this is gonna be nine over four raised to power zero, which is one times three, three. So my first term, a sub one is equal to three or a sub zero rather, okay? So my zeroth term will be three, and my common ratio is equal to nine over four. And as you can clearly see, nine over four is greater than one. So, and since the absolute value of r, which is the absolute value of nine over four is greater than one, the series diverges. You don't need to do anything else, okay? The series, where is the series? Three to the two n plus one times four to the negative diverges. And when it diverges, you're done. Hope you learned something in this video. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.